So, if you don't know who this is, let me do the honors of introducing you to who this is. She's a great friend of mine, a colleague, and an amazing person. So, this is my friend Michelle. And Michelle, tell them a little about who you are. Okay, well, I'm a spiritual life coach here in San Antonio. I'm also a best selling author, an angel intuitive, and master energy therapist. So I've been in private practice for about 20 years. I had a private practice in Mexico, and I moved here about seven years ago and opened up my space here. I've been connected with Angel about a year ago, and we've become great friends, like true, like kindred spirits. I agree. (laughs) So we're working on a little project, and we'll get to that in a little bit, but we kind of wanted to talk about, like, how putting ourselves like in the service of others and how that impacts our lives in a positive way. Like one of the things that came to mind when I wrote that, and I put a post about that earlier, so if you want to go check it back, you can check it out. Um, it was uh, Deepak Chopra. Deepak Chopra said that the fastest way to your happiness is to make others happy. And so I wanted to have a discussion about that. And so how do, how do you feel like putting yourself in the service of others? Like how does that show up in your life? It's been a consistent practice for me for over the last 20 years. I've gone on my own spiritual path and a piece of my own healing, a big piece of my own healing work was just allowing myself to be present for other people. As I started to heal myself, I wanted to offer that healing Mm -hmm. and to stretch myself out. And so my daily work is about being of service. And so I'm in a space now where I'm sort of extending myself. I feel like I'm serving people on an individual level, but over the last year I've been more called to expand that reach and to start collaborating Mm -hmm. and working in community. And I think what we talked about was that so many people are also feeling that way as well. Yeah, I agree. And and I think for me, like, I can totally relate to your... So as you heal, you want to share that healing with others. And that's the path of the wounded healer. You know, as as I heal, you heal. As you heal, others heal. And I I think that you and I have connected in that very deeply. And for me, like, helping others is where it's at. Like, like I think someone said, it might have been Tony Robbins, I don't know who it was, but they said, like, it's impossible. Like, if if you're depressed, if you're just down and out, go get, go get up and go help somebody else see how you feel. Yeah. It just feels amazing. You know? that, yeah. So, what else? What else do you got about well, that? Well, I've been a participant in a recovery program called Al-Anon for 21 years. And a big foundation of that is part of my teaching, is part of my learning for myself in that, is that they say just even get up in the meeting and, you know, put up some chairs or make some coffee. Do something to get out of yourself. Get out of thinking about yourself and express and give to other people. And so as I started to do those things and show up and just be of service and feel like I was a part of that community, I started recognizing that I was forgetting about what I thought was so important about me by extending myself and giving and serving and being present for other people. And now today, I can wake up in the morning and I can have a day where it's like, oh, I don't feel like totally aligned with myself right now. And then I'll go in and I'll work with the client and after that I feel elated. Yeah. Like completely yeah. like joy filled Field. because I have been present for someone else, present for somebody mm-hmm. else's process and allowed myself to be of service. You know, it's very similar to like, if you want to, if you really want to learn something, teach it. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like that. Like if you really want to learn something, teach it. Yeah. If you really want to be happy, you have to give what you want. Mm-hmm what you want for yourself just keep it you want people to smile at you all day smile you want people to hug you hug them you know give what you want to receive and what do you think about the idea of like when you give to others you're giving to yourself Um, well I think in the process of giving I am receiving and so I don't look Mm. at giving with expectation of receiving my giving process has shifted into I know that I'm always going to receive from the universe if I'm giving in abundance I'm going to receive in abundance but I've shifted to a place of recognizing that that abundance flows to me in all directions from all directions in an unlimited way and so I open my heart space and just allow myself to give with the freedom that I want to receive as well no I love that in fact I think one of the assumptions that we make is like you're my friend so I'm gonna give something to you and then I expect that to come back from you like if you give you're gonna receive like that's something that we believe that's something that we hear Mm -hmm. but the mistake that we make is that I'm gonna get it back from the person that I gave it to 
and that's not how it works. You're going to receive. I promise you, you're going to receive. But it may come from somewhere else in the universe, from a different source, from a different person, from a dog that comes and licks your hand. You never know where you're going to get it from. So if you remove that expectation, then you'll really be giving freely. And, and when you say giving is receiving, I find that when I give to you, there's really no exchange. Because it's source, or for some people that's God, source is giving to source. So there's really no exchange. Yeah. I think that there was a lot of freedom for me when I got into the place of recognizing that I didn't have to hold somebody to giving back to mm -hmm. me and that I could let go of that and trust that spirit would flow through all those different directions and that I would receive back and it's it's created this freedom within my relationships now because I just know okay I'm giving in generosity yeah. to you but yeah. you owe me nothing. nothing you owe me yes. nada nada <laughs> that's difficult for, for yeah. people I think that's a difficult concept yeah but it takes doing it and being seeing the evidence you know that if I do this this is theoretically this is what I, I've been told or what I read and then seeing the evidence of like oh mm -hmm. I do receive and I didn't have to it didn't have to come from her or from him you know? yeah. it does work you know? exactly. here we have a comment right here let's see so Ruben says, I always try my best every day to do good deeds to everyone at my job and where I go to, when I go to the boxing gym to Sum or Sumba Studios. And that's true. I mean, I know that guy personally. He's a good friend. He goes out of his way for anyone and everyone. He's actually helped me move a couple times. Oh, that's beautiful. And he expects nothing. And, and I think sometimes people can take advantage of that. Uh -huh. They take advantage of your kindness. They take advantage of your giving. And, and I felt that way. There was a time where I was like, I'm done. I'm just not going to give. And then a good friend told me, giving isn't about the other person. It, giving isn't about how it's received. Let them receive it however they want to receive That's on them. That's their karma. Your karma is the fact that you gave because giving is who you are. It's not something you do. It's who you are. It, that really connects me to something that I read by Wayne Dyer at one point. And it was, I lived in Mexico for 10 years, and so a lot of times we would see there was a lot of need there. There was just an overwhelming need. Moving out of the States and moving into another culture for me was an eye-opening experience of the tremendous need that there is in other countries. And so I felt overwhelmed on a lot of days just by the amount of need there was and the amount of service and wanting to help and wanting to help and not feeling, and then deciding, well, I have to decide here, decide there. And then I was out in front of, um, when I moved back here to the States in San Antonio, near Walmart, near the Walmart, near my house, there are people sit out there with signs and they hold up and they ask for money. And I started observing the amount of people that would pass by this person holding up and wouldn't Sorry. give anything. And I think I started looking at my own judgment around that as well. Mm. And I started looking at my own fears and becoming aware of like what conscious ideas are passing through my head. And I started hearing like my mom and my dad's voice <laughs> like oh saying God. stuff like, yeah. well, they should go get a job and they're just looking for a handout mm. and all this other stuff. And so I started centering myself in this space of I'm just gonna give to give. And I'm gonna ask the angels in this space, will it serve this person for me to give to that oh, person I like that today. Question. And sometimes the answer was no. It's, no. it's not intention. But then I listen, I tune in, and, and a lot of times I'll just whip out a $20 bill and hand a $20 bill. And I read in a book that Wayne Dyer wrote that he spoke on that particular subject, and he said it's not for me to judge where what that money is used yes. for once it's been given. Yes. It's only me expressing From here there. spirit. That's it through my heart and in, in letting go in detachment mm -hmm. but I am allowing the, the love the of flow. spirit to flow through me if I'm guided to serve in that way I agree yeah. you know speaking of the, that homeless person when I used to live downtown uh, there was a lot of homeless people there and I and I've often felt like you like I want to help I want to help I want to help mm -hmm. and there was this one particular homeless guy who would always hang out near my area or he would sit at my steps or across the street or to the side of my house and he would never take my help it would be like freezing cold outside and I'd bring him a jacket and he would say no or I would bring him some food and he would say no and I was getting mad I'm like man I'm trying to help you like you know and I'm like I even think I said you're being ungrateful you know not to him but I thought it 
And then one day, I was coming home from work, and he was sitting at my steps, and I had like an extra drink and an extra some chips or something. And he finally said, I offered it to him, and he finally said, "Okay, you know what, man? I'll take it." You know, uh, he said something like, "Maybe I'll help you for a change." And I said, "What? Like, how are you helping me? Like, I'm helping you." But then I reflected on that, and I was like, you know what, he's right. He's helping me. He's helping me to look within myself, to be more kind, to pull out compassion. He's bringing, he's, he's bringing the best out of me by being who he is. And, and some of them do feel that even in their circumstances, they're serving a purpose. They feel like God still has a purpose for them, even in those circumstances, you know? Beautiful. It is a purpose. It's showing up to offer us an opportunity to evolve beyond our limitations, I think. Yeah. What he expressed was like spiritual wisdom it to really you. It really was. Like really profound spiritual wisdom. It's like that song, like you never know if that's an angel in disguise. Exactly. You know? Yeah. It could have been, you know? Here I am. There's your opportunity for yes. growth today, angel. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Well, Michelle and I uh, have a, a little project that we're working on, and why don't we tell them about it? Oh, I'm very excited about this particular project. It's called Wings of Light, and I was expressing it to Angel a few months ago that I had this calling. I just have had this tug and this pull on me that's been happening for about a year where I felt like I needed to extend myself into the community to be of service in a different way. And um, for myself, I serve on a daily basis working with individuals and then I also work with groups, but it felt like something that I needed to come together in community and then incorporate my children into that process. And I have um, a 12-year-old and an 8-year-old son, sons, I have two sons, and I um, really wanted to teach them about service. And for myself, I grew up Catholic, I grew, went to Catholic schools, but I can tell you that I realized as an adult that I was never taught within my own home how to be of service, how to be a, a generous person at serving in the community. And what I've realized in, in raising my own children and being a parent is that it is something that we need to teach our children. And so I finally put all of these desires that I had together and, and talked to Angel about it. And Angel, because he has a daughter, that his, his daughter and my son are great friends, and we started discussing this idea. And he was really enthusiastic about it with me, and then we decided to collaborate on it. And so the idea around the group is that it's a monthly meetup, and... It, it's for adults and children, and so you can come as an adult, you can come as an adult who brings children in your life. They don't necessarily have to be your own kids. They can be grandkids or, exactly. or nieces and nephews or just friends of a family, but any other child or yourself as an adult that you want to get involved in the community with a group of people and come together as service. And so our first month, last month, we were asked by Unity Church of San Antonio to come and beautify their campus. Mm -hmm. And we had a, a beautiful group of people, we were probably about half of the people yeah. mm -hmm. that showed up were participants of our particular group in the, in the event that we had sent out. And we ended up helping them to paint. We yeah. did Cut lawn work. I mean, we did so much. <laughs> yeah, cleaned out their kitchen. And at the end of the day, it was, there was a, a a community sense yep. of we had accomplished something really important for that I spiritual agree. community and everybody was so the vibration was happy and excited everybody had fun while we were there we even, even went afterwards yeah. yeah even the kids the kids you can see the kids that participated were really glowing with enthusiasm mm -hmm. to have the opportunity to be of service like it wasn't a drag for the kids oh, no, you would no, think no. like i don't want to do this it's but they, i think they understood what we were trying yeah. to do you know? yeah exactly yeah and it's really important i think i agree with her completely like for me, like for my daughter to learn that, because I didn't learn it either. I grew up Catholic just like her, but it wasn't really taught. It was something that was talked about, mm -hmm. but it wasn't like it wasn't shown by actions, you know. Um, and so that's something that has been really uh, near and dear to my heart. When I was, when I lived in the downtown, me and my best friend, we would get. On, I had a minivan at the time, and we would like collect donated clothes. And there were so many homeless people under the bridge of 281 in McCullough, and we would load up my truck, kind of like a store. And we'll drive under the under the overpass, and they would just come, and we let them pick. Like if they were shopping at a store, it wasn't like here's a handout. They were just like pick shopping, right? And so I would take my daughter with me, and she got to see all of that. I wanted her to see that, you know, that you know, not only to to instill a sense of gratitude for what we have, but also to think, to be selfless, 
And so this is a perfect opportunity to do it. On my page, I've been putting links about it, uh, the, the Wings of Light. If you go to the events page, like if you go to events on Facebook, just look up for the event. It's, it's on Sunday, yeah, January 16th, Sunday. Yeah? Uh -huh. 1230. 1230. And you'll find the event. You can go to my page. You can go to Michelle's page. She's one of my friends. I tagged her on this video. You can also go to your website. Uh -huh. What's exactly. your website? It's www.michellemalady.com. Just like the name that I tagged. Uh -huh. And come show up. If you're going to come, if you want more information, message me there. We'll, we'll get in contact with you. We just want to bring uh, toppings or uh, cones or cups, accessories that they can put the ice cream in because who's, who's bringing the ice cream? It's Unity Church of San Antonio is sponsoring the event and they have had HEB Grocery has agreed to um, supply all of the ice cream wow. for our event. That's awesome. And so this event for this month is at Pecan Hill and that's a senior living facility that for 62 and older and their low income families or couples or individuals that live there and I have served there during Christmas parties and been a part of that. And so this is something new that um, one of the board members at Unity Church originated and asked us to participate in. And um, we're going to serve ice cream and play games and have a good time. And it's just 12.30 to 1.30. It's Simple. one hour of your time. And we're also um, collaborating with um, Awakening Community as well. So we already have quite a few people that are signed up to participate, but we welcome as it's many gonna more. Awesome. It's going to yeah, be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, let's see what we got here. Okay, Ruben made another comment. He says that what I said was very true. He just wants people to remember him as a good person. That's great. I think it's great. Yeah, I think that's that's, that's, that's what my intentions are set on these days. Mm -hmm. It's waking up and then, and it shifted me over the last year and really thinking about this topic to start considering in the morning and waking up and just simply saying, how may I be of service today? Yeah. And what Ruben shared for me is true. It's sometimes it's just smiling at the person in the grocery store or it's extending my hand to somebody that needs help with their groceries when I go out into mm -hmm. the parking lot. It doesn't take a There's lot. There's a lot of ways that we can get outside of ourselves and be of service and I'm learning more and more ways mm -hmm. every day. It's it's really called this into consciousness for I me. agree. I agree. And it's a space. Yeah, it's simple. It's just smiling at someone like you said. You can change someone's day. Exactly. So. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope to see you Sunday. Message me. Message her. Comment on the on this post, like it, share it if you know people that are that are out of service, let them know about it. And hopefully we'll see you Sunday. If not, we'll see you next week. Right. Bye. Bye, have a great night.